Transistors are the building blocks of all active devices. The number of transistors in a single household could easily exceed the entire population of Earth. Their application ranges from a simple thermometer to satellites. Life would be much different without them. Most transistors are three terminal devices constructed from different semiconductor materials. Bipolar and CMOS are the most common types of transistors. In this tutorial, we will cover bipolar transistors. A bipolar transistor three terminals are, the emitter represented by E, collector represented by C, and base represented by B. The key feature of a bipolar transistor is that a very small change in the base current can result in a much larger current in the other two terminals. There are two types of bipolar transistors, PNP and NPN. The P and N letters describe the physical arrangement of the materials from which they are made. The two diode analogy, two diodes with their cathodes or anodes tied together, is a common way to describe the operation of a transistor. Traditionally, transistors are depicted using their unique symbol. In a PNP transistor current flows from the emitter to the collector, and for an NPN transistor this flow is from the collector to the emitter. Another difference between the operation of NPN and PNP transistors is the polarity of the terminal voltages. The schematic symbol of a transistor shows the direction of current flow through the transistor. Transistors operate in three distinct regions, active, saturation, and cutoff. In the active region, the collector current equals the base current multiplied by beta, the current gain of the transistor. Beta can range from 20 to several hundred. In this region, the collector voltage of an NPN transistor is bigger than the voltage at its base, and the emitter current is the summation of the collector and base currents. Outside the active region the transistor is either on, or off. When it is on, the transistor is in its saturation region where the collector current is at its maximum. When saturated, the transistor acts like a short circuit. When the voltage difference between the base and emitter is not sufficient to clear the potential barrier of the transistor, the transistor is in the cutoff region. In this region, the collector current is zero and the transistor is off, acting like an open circuit. The behavior of a transistor allows it to function as a signal amplifier in its active region, and a switch in the saturation and cutoff regions. There are three configurations to use a transistor as an amplifier, the common base to amplify voltage, the common collector to amplify current, and the common emitter to amplify both the current and voltage that are applied to the transistor. To review the operation of a transistor as an amplifier, consider the circuit of a typical common emitter NPN transistor. To keep the transistor in its active region, we need to ensure that the base voltage, is always more than the emitter and less than the collector voltages. For this configuration, VBE is about 0.7 volts. To analyze the circuit, first we study its operation under DC conditions. C1 acts as an open and blocks any DC voltage from the base. Therefore, the voltage at the base is about 2 volts and at the emitter about 1.3 volts, guaranteeing an active operation for the transistor. This circuit is said to be self-biased. The emitter current flowing through R4 is about 1.3 mA. Almost the same amount of current must flow through collector and R3. This makes the collector voltage and the output about 12.4 volts. For an AC signal C1 is no longer open. For example when the signal is a 100 Hz sine wave, we observe the signal shifted to about 2 volts at the base. The AC voltage at the emitter is the same as that of the base, since the transistor acts like a buffer, passing the AC signal directly from its base to its emitter. This results in an AC current through emitter and consequently R4, equal to V in divided by 1K. This current must flow through R3, resulting in an AC voltage at the collector equal to 15 volts minus 2 times V in. The negative sign is due to the fact that as the collector current increases, the collector voltage decreases. 
The DC component of the output can be blocked by adding a capacitor in series with the collector signal. The circuit effectively amplifies AC voltages by a factor of negative 2. Monitoring the input on channel 1 in yellow, we use channel 2 in blue to probe the base. Emitter and collector voltages. Switching to the AC mode and using similar voltage setting for both channels, we confirm the negative 2 amplification factor. Transistors, when used as switches, are the basic building blocks of all logic gates. As a switch, 0 volts defines logic low, and the supply voltage level defines logic high. If the input of the NPN circuit is at logic 0, the transistor is in its cut-off region. It acts as an open switch resulting in logic 1 at the output. On the other hand, if the input is at logic 1, the transistor is in its saturation region and on, making the output logic 0. This circuit works as a NOT gate. Similarly, we can verify the circuit of a non-inverting switch, or a buffer gate. Different combinations of these circuits can make more complex bipolar logic gates. The inverting and non-inverting buffer circuits are evident in the two input NAND gate, NOR gate, AND gate, and OR gate. More complex circuits such as operational amplifiers and data processors are essentially a collection of transistors in a small area. The integration of more features within electronics components demands smaller transistors. The size of transistors has been decreasing ever since its invention in 1947 by Shockley. They will continue to decrease for many more years, reaching approximately 5 nanometers long and 1 nanometer wide. That is just about 5 atoms wide. Thanks for watching.